back to Invincipod, probably the greatest podcast about the Amazon original series Invincible. My name is James. I'm Ralph. And today we're going to talk about season one of Invincible, the whole right. thing, all the episodes, all the books that are related to the episodes, everything. Yeah, I have a friend who just started reading the books. I have a couple of friends who actually are starting to read the books. They're grabbing the hardcovers. I guess the compendiums like sold out everywhere. Oh, cool. Um, it's on but, sale um, in the UK on Comixology at the moment for fifteen pounds, which is cool. nothing. Yeah, um, but like, they're afraid of like. First, my first friend who hasn't read the book, watched the series, said that we as a podcast never spoiled them. So she cool. was, she just brought that up and said, "Cool, thanks." Uh, my right. friend Mark, my friend Mark, who's reading the book, um, ju- is just starting to read the book. Um, wanted to know if the podcast had any book spoilers in it, which uh, it's hard to say. Like I, I said, the example was like if we say the name Oliver, you have no frame of reference of who Oliver is, exactly. so you won't get really spoiled. Um, but I, I also told him like. You finish season one or series one of Invincible, the 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 TV show. Um, sort of the big big spoiler happens at the end of that season. So I think from here on out, there's not really any spoilers. I can't think of any like there's, there's character deaths things, or anything. There's things that happen, but there's nothing that is on the scale of Nolan isn't a good guy. Right. So like that's that's the big one you've got there now. So like right. uh, after this it is it's the same thing. It's like unless you've got a frame of reference, it's not really a spoiler because you don't know. So right, right. But <clears throat> the this this the sort of Nolan's game plan with the Viltrumites um, is kind of the linchpin for the rest of the series. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you got to this point, you made it <laughs> to issue twenty six yeah. or whatever, so you're good to go. Um, there's nothing really. We could talk about events and stuff. And this episode, we might get into the future, um, what we're hoping to see in the future yeah, based on the comic. I but... feel like we'd probably do that like in the lead up to season two. We're going to talk about like what we hope for right. the seasons and stuff like that. Right. Um, but speaking of my friend Mark, so apparently at one point on our podcast, it was one of our pre-season episodes, you mentioned somebody listening to this podcast uh, on a Tesla, in a Tesla. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah, was I with remember. his, he was with his friend Vactor, uh, Trent Vactor, and they put it on. They're both listening to the show in a Tesla. That's so cool. Great. Yeah. Were they listening to it on yeah. like the Tesla own brand podcast I, service? I think I don't. I'm not familiar with Teslas, but it, it appeared so. That's cool. Now I just want to let people know right off the bat, because you're probably most likely listening to this on your favorite podcatcher. Um, we're also shooting this episode. So yep. if you go to youtube.com slash Invincipod, thank you everybody who subscribed. Uh, uh, you can watch us talk about this. Yep. Um, if you don't follow us on so, Instagram and stuff, like this is what we look like. Hello. Right. <laughs> a couple of more, more, a couple of bearded guys on YouTube. Yeah, that's it. Two more bearded whites. That's just what YouTube needs. <laughs> um, oh, so I'm trying something right now. And um, let's see if this works out. So this is something that's exclusively for the people watching the show. I don't know what this is going to do. Okay. Oh, but there is the picture. Let's put it. Oh, man, I'm trying to. Here we go. Anyway, here we go. Oh, I see. He did, it, he did it in portrait mode. But here's yeah. the picture of Invincible being played on the Tesla. That's great. So I'm trying to find the best. That's probably the best view. So that but, that is now the challenge, everybody listening and watching this. Um, right. Send us send us more impressive places that you listen to Invincible. Yeah. Yeah. That can be my your friend, off-season homework. Listen to Invincible in the most impressive place. My my friend Justin has a has a blog he's had a blog for years and he would show like his blog on like a nintendo ds like someone was like watching their looking at his blog on a nintendo ds then someone saw that blog post and read it on their iphone and then someone saw that iphone and 
showed that blog post on an iPad. And then it was just finding more and more places to keep that sort of, you know, when Ray in, in Last Jedi flicks her fingers and it's the mirror yeah, image. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like just kept going and going and going. So yeah, try to find the weirdest place. Like listen to so Invincipod in an Apple store. Listen oh, to Invincipod yeah. in... Subscribe to we, we Invincipod need... on all the Apple devices. in an Right. App. I think the main goal, the eventual goal, we need to get an astronaut to listen to Invincipod in space. I mean, like going back to Tesla, they're sending people to Mars, like in the not too right. distant future, hopefully before Invincible's over. If we can get someone listening to Invincipod on their way to Mars so that they can get a sequid on their head, like <laughs> perfect. Do it. That is that is the ultimate goal right there. Right. I I, I and that's we can start smaller. Um, no, right now we can start on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> we can start in like Antarctica. That would be pretty amazing. <laughs> that would be pretty um, great. I'll, so wherever you're listening to this or watching this, uh, let us know where you're doing it from and what device you're using. I don't, mm. I don't know if YouTube is on Switch or on. They used to have it on DS, right? On the, I mean, on someone, the... someone watched uh, Christopher Nolan's Tenet on a ds they put it on a cartridge like they managed to rip it to a cartridge just to piss him off i think because he was so dead oh yeah releasing it in theaters right that's so that's yeah like more of that the ultimate more of that. well they used to put those movies on uh game boy color i yeah. think it was and maybe that's what they watched like, on i can't remember yeah that was on something it might have been the like game boy advance those little the little mini cartridges yeah i don't know where this came from but i keep seeing someone watching like the most relevant thing whatever's trending now but on a shrek tv have you seen this thing <laughs> no it's a green tv and i think it lights up and it's got the shrek ears on oh, it gosh. it's like made for kids but yeah. they're putting like you know mandalorian or or what's like the are. most serious movie that came out this year they're like watching that stuff yeah, but yeah, they yeah, put yeah. the the title screen on this shrek tv that's sitting on like a hardwood floor in the corner <laughs> like the like the the wires so exposed, it's so the, hilarious. The internet was probably a mistake, and yet here we are talking <laughs> about Invincible. Right. Uh right. so season one, what a amazing season! I feel like like we've we've talked about it <clears throat> every week for the last, well, six weeks or whatever. But like, right, eight episodes, forty five minutes apiece. There wasn't a bad one amongst them. No, I think it was like episode four where I was like, okay, this is my favorite. Yeah, yeah, but it is setting stuff up and um, like knowing the stuff that's coming from that is exciting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they really, really grabbed the essence of Invincible and boiled it down to the eight episodes and really like, I, I'm so happy to see that at least two of my friends have said, Hey, they're listening to the podcast, which is great. No one ever talks about my podcast to me. Um, but B, but B, like, are picking up the books, hardcovers, I've compendiums. Got, like, I've got same. Like, I've got people who are watching the show because they saw us talking about it so much. They are listening to the podcast because they enjoyed the show, and now right. they're reading the books because they enjoyed the show and they've enjoyed the podcast. Right. Um, and what's what's so great about the show is A, it makes you want to read the book, but B it really does. It's the same story, but a little bit different. So the book has like the book can exist and the show can exist. They're yeah. both great. They yeah. both have a similar thing. If you watch the series and read the book, you're not going to be surprised by Nolan. But you're no. gonna see how much has changed. Yeah, it needs to be. And yeah. Yeah. The story the story holds up on its own. You don't need explanations of these things. Right. And I want to say, like, in, even in the book, like, there wasn't as much foreshadowing. So you're not really looking for it. Mm. I think as Invincible readers, you kind of get, almost get blindsided a little mm. bit. You do get the Guardians of the Globe in episode or in issue seven. And then between that time and the, you know, there's not a whole lot of mystery behind it. It's just Nolan's secret. Yeah. It's like there's a secret, but we don't we don't see it from the other side. So right, it's yeah, it's it's, it's a different kind of drama. Yeah, um, and you're we gonna get, through, get we they burn through they they get through that as like the main 
thrust of the season, which is great. Mm -hmm. But we also get so much more in the show that's happening in that time because they elongate that storyline. Right. We get stuff brought forward that happens afterwards, like Mark going to Mars, uh, meeting Alan. All of this is stuff that happens after Nolan right. uh, in the books. Uh, <laughs> hell, Cecil isn't introduced into the books until after Nolan. Um, and we get him in really? episode two. Yeah. Like that, yeah. I mean, Mark, Mark meets Cecil like after his fight with Nolan. Um, okay. And, and that's, we also get the white room and stuff like that all in that one issue. But it's, it's great. I think the reshuffling that they've done with it, it's, mm -hmm. it feels like a tighter story. It feels like a more confidently told story. It, it almost feels like Kirkman knows what he, he knows what he loves with his creation. Yeah. He knows the what the fans love with his creation. How are we gonna get like if, if he knows he has eight eight episodes? How is he gonna fit all that in? Like we all knew from the get go as fans, like they got to get to Nolan and Mark's fight. Yeah. Like that's that's what we we've got to see that. That's the if thrust anything, that's the, the thing we need to see. But also with you saying that Cecil and Alan don't show up till after that fight, well. We got to see if you only have eight episodes, we got to see them. Yeah, the so main characters. I like that they brought them forward. Definitely. Um, I, it's, so. it, the way I was talking to a friend about it um, the other day is it feels like the book was, as comic books should be, I believe, it was written month to month. It mm -hmm. was written for issues. It wasn't written for the trade. Right. Um, the trades are varying lengths. They are whatever they need to be. Like some people, some writers will write to the trade like they'll write six you six issue arcs for trades mm -hmm. which you know right. that's where the business is going in print form anyway so it makes sense right but invincible was a, a true like ongoing superhero story which is like mm -hmm. it's all about that monthly churn it's that monthly issue here's another one here's another one here's another one so right. stuff would be set up and then paid off months and months later or right. stories would take as long as they needed to it could be two issues it could be four issues it could right. be a lot more Whereas with the show, they, also... know, they know that they've got those eight episodes. So they right. can they can go, right, okay, here's our act structure. We can break it down. And it worked. Right. It worked so well. Yeah. One of the things I love is Kirkman talking about um, missing threads, forgetting, um, you know, certain stuff he sets up that he never remembered to pay off. Or does a and... hundred issues later or something right and i think it's i think what's kind of cool is now that the series is done it's 144 episodes or issues yeah it's 140 I think, something. the comic it's so just since that's completed one yeah yeah so since it's completed he knows what he has the story he has completed and mm -hmm. he can just kind of pick the best things and rearrange Absolutely. them and bring them you know and things like the there's that's not necessary yeah the the main story in the first six issues of invincible is uh the human bombs yeah at mark's mark's school yeah um it's the first that's four, completely, i believe yeah it's completely thrown out though yeah it's completely thrown out of the series because so as we said about, the episode it's it's similar thematically to the reanimen when they right. get to college so yeah that's a exactly. better story so instead of like right. rewriting himself like 10 15 issues later just do it in the series earlier but what's great about it, what I love is, so now people who are picking up the comic book are going to have this whole new Mark in high school storyline that can very much still fit within the series. Yeah. Like, I feel like you hear, you hear stories or you hear like dialogue in the show where Amber says they've been going out with each other for three months or something. It's like, well, what happened during that three months? We can say in our head, oh, that's when they dealt with the human bombs. Yeah, the, so, the teacher who went nuts sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so you can have this sort of, they can both coexist, but still sort of be canon, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. There's there's very little that's contradicted one from the other. Right, um, right. It, Maybe like, just Debbie be... knowing... Debbie knowing, Debbie already being in real estate as opposed to deciding to get a job in issue 25. Um, do, things like that. Yeah. But like that's do you so minor. Do you think the readers will, the new readers will struggle, struggle with Amber? 
She's definitely the most changed character. Right. Um, her and Debbie, I think, are the most changed characters. Right. Um, for the better, I think, in the show. Mm -hmm. I think both of them right. are improvements. Uh, obviously, right. by the end of the season, we had our problems with uh, Amber. Yeah. Understandably. Uh, I think like I think you uh, you're meant to be frustrated with her you because you want I mean that's the yeah. idea isn't it that you want to be sympathetic to right. Mark but you like you're frustrated with her but you understand her point of view mm -hmm. like I get it I get why she's <laughs> acting the way she is and she still cares yeah. like she's not being a cold hearted bitch or anything like she's still she's yeah. looking out for herself as well which I get but yeah I I don't know I think they will think she's even more of a nothing character in the books. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. I think they'll struggle with Debbie and they'll be wanting more out of Debbie, but she just doesn't have a lot of screen time in the book. Right. In those, those early issues. Um, she's just right. there for uh, the joke of m making dinner and then someone just bursts in like with super speed that you don't sort of see. Um, right. That's kind of her entire point in those first few issues at least yeah well luckily with the book um you can read those first six and like yeah, nothing. half okay. hour 45 minutes tops yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah like the the book is so easy to get through that there's a few you, issues you know, that like get wordier but even the wordiest right. of invincible issues isn't at all like reading a bendis book right or I, like the wordiest you get is like alan and mark yeah uh, or like Alan, saw... Alan has a lot of exposition. Yeah, info dumps. Like, and you get yeah. an entire issue that is an info dump issue. But then, in that same like <laughs> trade, you'll get an issue that is a two-page story that is the secret origins of Rexplode, or like right. a one-page uh, immortal backstory and stuff like that. Like, right there, someone mentioned on Twitter that they went from episode or issue 70 to 71 and lost clearly did missed out on some information. And there was like an episode, there was an issue 70.5 yeah. that's out there. I wondered if those are all popped into the, into the trades. I feel like so, the, the information in that is there's an, super important. There's an issue zero. That's quite early on. Uh, that is in the compendium in the right place. Um, okay. That, that is the one that's got like the secret origins of various different characters. Um, Mark and Amber hook up for the first time. And so Kirkman does a, a cutesy little thing. He's like, let's give those two some privacy and check in with some of the other characters. <laughs> and so we right. we cut around and we see some other characters. And yeah, we get a few right. secret origins. Um, uh, my, my friend Mark was listening to one of our earlier episodes preseason. Yeah. And he said, we started talking about Amber. No, we started talking about Eve, I think. And he started skipping ahead because he was afraid of spoilers. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what I said. But I, don't I think, think we spoiled I think too you, much. Yeah, I think from here on out, there's not much really we can spoil other than like large storylines, like what happens after season one. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like plots, and entire, I mean, like things that could be an entire season for all we yeah. know. Like, and then the way the way it was left and the way Alan was talking to Mark, like obviously we all know Nolan's out there. And there's other Viltrumites, and that Earth needs to be taken over by Viltrum. So well, we know how it plays out. Yeah, we know how it plays out. Um, so, like, that's really the only spoiler is like where the story goes. Mm. But still, I don't think like if you, if anyone's reading the book, I don't know if they're reading the book just to the point where we're at in the season, and they're saving that stuff. So it's going to be kind of we're going to have to like sort of tap yeah. dance around stuff, but. Um, like I said, once you get the Nolan thing, it turns into the book. Like it's not like there's not more secrets down the road. This is like this is like no, no I'm your there's, father. There's plots. There's this plots. is Darth Vader. Yeah. 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 There you go. I mean, it is. Yeah. It's exactly that. Um, that's the big deal, and you're and you're pretty much now need yeah, to see how my, they're gonna my friend fix Pete. that. My friend Pete is, uh, he, I thought I'd sold him on the books years ago because every other comic book that he loves is stuff that I put in his hands when he was a customer at the shop um, and said, read this, you'll love it. Uh, apparently, Invincible wasn't one of those, uh, which surprised oh. me. But he's been watching the show and listening to the podcast um, and raging against red wine in the fridge. 
Um, <laughs> and he's he was saying to me at the weekend that he might start reading the books. And I was like, do it. Great. But he said the same thing. He's like, do I read until the end of where I've seen or shall I just keep going? I said, keep going. Like, just read as yeah. much as you want to keep going. Like, if you can get through the whole lot, like, by season two, which you should be able to. Um, I think I'll right. have done that easily. Yeah. Um, then, cool. That's great. I, I can't wait for you to finish the series. The, I can't, the yeah. comic series. Um, I'm up to because... issue, I think, like 30 or something now. I'm not, I've never read a series, a comic series from beginning to end, like a, like an ongoing series. Yeah. Um, usually they just keep on going. And you drop <laughs> usually, off at some point and it's just like, yeah, yeah I'm done with um, that. Yeah. But um, incredibly satisfied with mm -hmm. the ending of Invincible, the comics. Um, I think a season, if you finish before season two, we can do a pre-show or pre-season show where we actually get into the finale of the yeah. of the comics yeah um it 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 yeah and what's hilarious what's like i'm sure kirkman towards the run-up to the ramp up to the end of the series the comic book series mm. every single cover he did was someone else dead and i remember seeing the covers yeah yes. and so what's what's hilarious is like the covers of Invincible are like purposefully deceptive. Always. A lot the, of the time. The solicits used to be as well. I mean, you know, from working yeah. in comic book shops, like, yeah. like a lot of people, I mean, everyone can see the solicits, but like we would have to look at them and go, oh, okay, right. And I'm, I'm ordering X number of this book this month. Um, and it's right. always like three months in advance. And Kirkman was like the only person who never even wanted to spoil comic shop employees with his solicits because he'd just write. Right utter bullshit like with walking dead when he ended right. walking dead he solicited like three months of books that were never going to exist the shops yeah. were ordering that and it was just like and then he just dropped the finale he just dropped the last issue he's like oh that was it we're done <laughs> um whereas <laughs> i think great. with invincible at least he announced this is going to be the last one sort of thing. right he announced that i but, think of maybe a year out or something, something like, like that. that around yeah. the time cory walker started coming cory walker came back and started picking up the art while mm -hmm. Otley did these great big enormous like, like I mean you haven't read it but you uh, know I've seen some Otley in... needs yeah, yeah if Otley needs time to do something it was it was it was perfect because um around Invincible I think 50 mm -hmm. I think Invincible 50 there's a big event that happens yeah. Yeah. and <clears throat> there's the, like the double page spreads the splash pages I think that they just, had a big old gatefold cover, if I remember rightly, as well. Yeah. Like, if you're looking at us on, if you're watching this on YouTube, in our background, we have, like, an Otley image sort of obscured by us. I think, but it's I like, think Invincible 50 is, like, there. On my yeah, and it's like, it's like 50, <laughs> like, or 20 or a dozen characters on a page. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Walker came in towards the end to do, like, a story arc, a seven issue story arc. While, and he'd do like Otley odd issues was... here and there as well sometimes. Right. Right. So um, it's just, it's just everything gets grand, but I love that leading up to the end, he would just every page or every cover would have just a major character on the page covered in blood. Awesome. And, and it's like, was, was that, I don't even know if I want to know. I was going to say, was that just, uh, hey, fuck you, they might be dead, they might not, kind of thing, but oh, I, don't, I, like, I don't. Yeah, like, it was like, okay, so I don't want to say who was on the covers. Yeah, okay. But let's just say, it, let's say a major character from season one. Let's say it's, let's say it's Debbie. Okay. You would see Debbie on the corner, on the cover, covered in blood. Yeah. And the next issue would be, let's say, Eve on the cover, yep. covered in blood. And then, so it Mark. would just literally be. The, the, the last like, one, probably, but yeah. Right, exactly. And it was all bullshit. And by that time, you knew it was bullshit. There was a cover, um, one of the covers I remember, where it shows, I mean, this might be a little bit of a spoiler. We've it already shows a family, people with shows, this episode. Yeah, it's a, it's a family unit sitting around a table. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the kids are playing games, and the parents are hanging out on the couch. Well, I, like, yeah. I want to say that one of those babies didn't exist. <laughs> i'm like it was like really like yeah, yeah. 
yeah um but it's just like stuff like that and i'm like okay they're just fucking with us now like they're just yeah, totally definitely. so so yeah um if you if you think you get spoiled by an invincible cover chances are you aren't yeah chances uh, are you aren't. or there's more to it than just what you see on the cover um yeah always always but but i mean you know what as soon as i mean you don't have to do this by season two but or whatever we don't have to do that comic series recap you know right before season two whenever yeah. that happens but whenever you're finished whenever oh, you're done it. yeah we're jumping on and we're, we're talking, talking about, about it because absolutely because it's it's hard because like i want to talk about it but i don't want to spoil stuff but it just brings me like joy. Like it's, it, it made me like, I've like, I read, I remember I was reading like five issues every night before bed mm. and I stopped right before the last one. And I let my wife know, I said, okay, this is a book I've been reading since 2008. I'm on the last issue. It's like, I think it's a, a bigger ish size issue. And I said, Leave this is it. it. I am. This is. <laughs> I am reading I, without telling her to just leave me alone. I was pretty much saying leave me alone, um, and I read it and it brought me so much joy. I did not shed a tear or anything. Like it wasn't. Like it was just. It was like a really good stick the landing ending. Like Perfect. you just kind of totally satisfied. Um, it's hard to do, and with Kirkman talking about him wanting to do like even go beyond yeah He's go beyond the book i'm like but i love the ending so much like i want to get to that point so we'll see what happens we'll see, we'll like, see i happens. mean we've got at least two more seasons worth at least um right that's great so whether or I'm not so we get we get that entire story or we get more i don't know it was issue 25 i believe is where we heard about the coalition of planets in the eighth episode of the show. Um, mm -hmm. We get to see them in issue 25 of the comic. Uh, we cut away. We see some more of Alan. I think it's in Alan's backstory. Um, right. It might not be his entire backstory, but we cut away. We follow him for a little while. Um, and he goes back to the coalition uh, to give his report that we mm -hmm. heard about that he's already given to them. So it's, it's sort of the what happened. Right there like flashback um and i as soon as we got to that page it it reminded me of something with a character who we meet as part of the coalition and i was like oh oh yeah so i think <laughs> that we'll get that next season um i have a feeling that he's already teased uh angstrom levy as a yeah villain that was a big season. name drop it was. He, right. he talked about that on like one of his little videos that he's been putting out. Um, a major character. We, a lot of people were expecting to see him in the finale, to be honest, because he's a major character. He's a. Uh, who... But the thing with the the finale I'm is so we kind of just didn't. got we got glimpses of things that are going to happen. But glimpses of things that we'd already had set up. You don't need to right. set up anything else because you've got enough threads. Right. Um, so I feel like this would be a great way to start the next season absolutely open, like open the this same, thread in the same way that we did with like the attack on the white house this season um, right you start with that you could even do like i i believe angstrom's introduction in the comics is a whole scene um that is is very cool and very different i'm not going to give it away here actually because it's very but in cool. the i want to say in the book doesn't it set up in like a page like a page or two it's it's a couple it, of pages it, yeah and then I think I want to say the 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 second page is the final page of an issue, if I'm not mistaken. I could be I'm wrong. Sure, could be completely sure. wrong. Yeah. But I want to say that story. Reading, that's the thing with reading the issues. compendium digitally is you can just sort of flip through, and there are right. issue breaks, but you'll blast right through them, and it it blurs yeah, it all but, together. But his story is one of those classic stories of he gets set up in a couple of pages and then just abandoned. And then down the road, he's he's not so much abandoned. Like they just every every couple of issues, they'll just check in with him for a couple of pages. Oh, like a black um, freighter style. Yeah, like it's absolutely. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it. It's it's just like it's not. You don't focus on him. It's just a uh, he's up to something over there. 
with with <laughs> right. with the Moolah twins. I'll say that he's is with the Moolah twins. Like that's I think right. fair game. Um, so yeah, he's he's a guy who deals with the Moolahs quite a bit, and I think that's why right. people were expecting him this season because the Moolahs had sort of they'd done their thing with Robot, and they were like, okay, how are they? What are they going to do in episode eight? And it, right. it turns out that we just got them getting rearrested. So, Angstrom, you think Angstrom's? I don't think Angstrom would be in the in the jail in the prison right? where they're at. No, I don't think so. No, I, don't think I think so. I think he's gonna. Um, I think he's gonna be the next person to free them because I feel like that might be a recurring gag. Is they just get arrested, then they're freed again for whoever needs. Yeah, them they seem. They seem. They seem to like accept their arrest pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it, this is like an ongoing thing. Like, hey, we got a place to stay. Yeah. <laughs> Until we I break mean, out again. So we things that we talked around in the show uh, that we were like, oh, we were expecting to see this, or we hoped to see this, and we didn't, but they changed it up. Um, obviously, we talked around uh, the immortal quite a bit, and then we eventually did see him come back, right. and we saw all of his history and everything history which was great um really done very well um but things like uh the Mauler twins arriving at the guardian's funeral to pay their respects right um i would have liked to have seen that they were in jail at the time so it was shuffled mm-hmm. around but that was a really fun scene i i enjoyed that from the comics right. that would have been one thing that i would have liked to have seen in the show if possible but right. i'm fine with it i don't I like i'm not missing it it's just like, a, oh, that, that's something that they could probably, probably could have done if they wanted to. I think so. Um, yeah, it seemed like they were really sticking to get the, the whole Nolan, getting to Nolan and Mark. Yeah. And I think because they shuffled or because the, the whole like mystery behind Nolan for the other characters and us knowing that Nolan killed the Guardians. Yeah that scene sort of takes on a whole different meaning. Like we as the audience or readers knew that Nolan killed the guardians, mm. but it felt like a much bigger deal in the show. Yeah. for sure. So I think the Maulers might've been a little, it would have been a little bit out of place. I think. Yeah. yeah. If anything, they um, would have shown up at the private funeral that we saw afterwards. Right. Um, right. Which would have been like, more of a kick in the teeth, like more of an insult, I think, to the the dead relatives or the relatives right. of the deceased sort of thing who were there. Right. Um, I I really enjoyed like more of a development with those relationships. Like you see that Debbie knows mm-hmm. these guys. Like they are right. Like the the. the I don't think there's there's any of that. None of that. Like we never see those spouses yeah. again. Like we, I think we see Red Rushes in the one flashback scene, but we don't even see mm-hmm. them at the funeral. I don't think. Like they're just not there. right they're non-existent um there is another spouse uh that debbie does become friends with in the comic books uh but that is of a character from capes inc which was another image book at the time which mm-hmm. was in the same universe i don't think kirkman wrote it but like it was a it was a companion thing it was capes inc is uh it's basically it's superheroes incorporated um yeah. It was a it was a group of heroes that were basically just on the payroll for the government. Like they would be hired, they could be fired. They were working for bonuses and stuff right. like that. It was, it was a workplace comedy, but in superheroes. Right, and Savage Dragon also did not appear. Savage Dragon um, at the uh, funeral. Um, Brit wasn't there. Right. Um, yeah, a few of the others like Wolfman doesn't isn't around yet in the comics even at that point, but. Yeah, all of the other right. either Kirkman or Image superheroes that are relatable. Right. Um, and who's Fight Force? Fight Fight Force are mentioned the... all the time, like as the basically yeah. the bitch group who is just like, oh, God. Right. Yeah. And yeah, then uh, Lizard League, I feel like they're the two named ops that we get all the time. Lizard League are like, like the villains that we always hear about that are nothing, that everyone can take them out straight away. Right. I feel like the book ha- is populated with more super power individuals like superheroes um and in the show not so much so i'm curious to see um what happens if there's an invasion is it just up to the mark to mark in the guardians of the globe are we going to get some other people joining the fight um i'm kind of hoping to see more they're they're all out there yeah i guess so i guess you're right so it'd be fun to see them show up um in future battles (laughs) yeah i I was i i 
I, you know, hope, I mean, we, like I mentioned, Otley would fill the page with battles Just and superheroes and, and villains yeah. and monsters. And Easter and eggs. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping like stuff like that starts showing up in the series mm. and we start getting a population of those great Kirkman pun filled names. Yeah. They're great. So, and I mean, hopefully, I mean, the show's obviously been successful enough for them to get two more seasons at least. Right. Uh, so hopefully that means a, a bit of a budget increase so that we get episodes that, of the quality of episode eight throughout. Right. Because even I've, uh, the people who were moaning about the animation leading up to that all sort of unanimously have said, like, it was vastly improved in episode eight. I haven't heard, um, I haven't heard any negative I haven't. comments. I know I run in, you know, circles that like invincible to begin with <laughs> so yeah, we are, you know we're, i don't yeah. really align ourselves with 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 haters of invincible no. i don't know if they're out there but it seems like the reception is fairly positive and like across the board and it seems to be crossing over with a lot of people that wouldn't normally have checked this sort of thing out um, right i think as the show has progressed and the quality is maintained and increased more and more people have gone oh i need to check this out or I need right. to, have you heard about this show Invincible? Like, which is great. That's what right. we want. Like, keep that train going in the off season. Like, if you liked it, tell people about it. Keep telling people about it. Don't let it drop from those, like, top shows on Amazon. Keep it right. in the zeitgeist. That is, that's on everyone. That's on us. That's on keep, you. Yeah. Keep buying those books, too. Keep buying the books. And <laughs> buy, like, I, I don't think we've got too much on the, in the UK store. But, like, I think there's, there's uh, merch on Amazon skybound have merch for the tv show like so mm -hmm. you know that's how you help that's how you keep this show going and right we love doing this and we can't do this without the show or right. we can but it'd be different well we get at least two more we got at least two is, more seasons. is is awesome because i you know we thought we there was a chance of us doing eight episodes and being done we didn't know so, no one knew um yeah. That was, it was a nice gift before the finale. It was it meant going yeah. into the finale, we could take that stress off of like a, oh God, what yeah. if they end it on a cliffhanger and we don't know if we're coming back? <laughs> like they right. didn't really. No. Um, not a cliffhanger, cliffhanger. Like if this had been it, then it ended on a nice way. Um, right. But, but knowing that going into the finale that we had two more seasons, it was like, sweet. Let's just go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine um, asked me, she was like, um, "What? why weren't they more concerned with where the hell Omni-Man went? Like, why were they just like quite content to just let him go? And my, my reasoning was, he left the solar system. And he left the solar system in a direct line. They made a point of sort of saying, like, this was a right. straight shot. He was just gone. Um, You're right. Which was like, okay, he's out of the way. And then when something was coming in, they didn't know what it was. And that's why they called Mark and were like, no kid, we need you. And I think I said it in the episodes, Mark thought that that was Omni-Man coming back. Right. I think you see it on his face. So I think they are 100% concerned. We see Cecil was building up a, a Reanimate army um, and probably a bunch of other stuff. And I feel like that is all to deal with the potential of omni-man or an omni-man level threat coming back right i mean that's just um, one one pure blood filter like what about if we had a dozen like right and then to on top of it all the entire world is grieving yeah a lot of lives are were lost on a global scale yeah. um the threat is gone so let's try to just let it sort breathe of for a pick second. up the pieces and and get it going like mark going out to space obviously isn't gonna isn't gonna help anything chasing omni-man isn't gonna help anything especially when he knows he's uh, not gonna win yeah and then the time is the you know right now they need to spend their efforts on when he comes back yeah building up defenses anything that could tackle him. mark training mark getting stronger yeah um the the guardians of the globe starting to really hone their skills and try to come up with solutions to stop that we've seen them sort of come up. together as a team is like now yeah. what can you do to basically level up that team like right now i feel like they're on bar borrowed time and they don't have they they don't know when their time's up but they know yeah. it's going to be up so let's at some get point, like you know 
yeah, Nolan revealed his intentions. Like, right. This planet is ours. This is like this is mine to conquer. So right. just because he left, they've got to be thinking that he's gone to regroup. Because they right. know that they didn't win. He left. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that the, the powers that be are shit scared <laughs> of yeah. when he does come back. But they are all, everyone's putting on a brave face for, you know, the lives that were lost. It's, yeah. I mean, we've seen it too much in this world without superheroes that after a tragedy you do, you have to sort of suck it up and go right okay that sucks we will deal with our how do we stop that it happening in the future but right yeah. now we just need to live yeah um, there's no point living in fear no yeah anything else anything it's... else about the season about the books uh... um not really not really i i i i, I love the book I love the show and I'm mm. glad they both exist. Me like, too. You know, and I, I have, there's, there's so many stories to read in the off season. So even though I said last time I was going to start reading more, I haven't since our last episode, um, I've been <laughs> setting up some other stuff, taking care yeah. of some other things, but we've got um, other projects to set up as well. Yeah. So um, that's kind of been where I'm at. I, I, I still have only read, Reread I've been I've been reading to... a few issues every shift that I'm at work at night. Um yeah. so yeah, I'm up to like issue thirty something, I think. Yeah. Unfortunately my work involves allow driving, you that. Yeah, so I no. can't I <laughs> can't pick yeah. it up, but um I need to get back on it. Definitely. Yeah, it's 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 well worth it. For if you've read it before and haven't read it in a long time, go back. It's <laughs> Yeah, I I'd forgotten so much stuff in the last like fifteen years, nearly. Um, right. So it's great, but every time I get to a page, I'm like, oh shit, yeah, I forgot that that had happened. That's great. Yeah, it's a real. It, he really likes those final splash pages. Yeah, for sure. Where you have to turn the page to see the big reveal, and then and you're when like, well, when getting to the keep next going. issue is just two swipes away, as opposed yeah. to waiting a month and then picking up at the next book right it's right. i love it yeah it's a great way to read it yeah when i got to the point where i was reading the monthlies i was like how how have people been doing this the whole time it's and you because so many of those threads are set up so far in advance you're like i recognize that character i know that they were up to something but i don't really remember what because i've been reading this and every other book that's coming out whereas now like right. all my focus on comics is on invincible at the moment rereading invincible uh i'm not reading anything else like concurrently it's it's great i'm really really digging into it all right well we'll be around we'll before be back. season two is up yeah we'll be back um, we don't I know when exactly to talk about that final will. issue I uh, yeah i mean you're, you're making me want to go and read it you're making me want to yeah, go, go read, read it, it right now go read it um until next time head over to invincipod.com that'll give you links to our twitter instagram Facebook and YouTube.com you slash Instagram us. or slash Invisipod. <laughs> we put in so much work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, next season we'll probably be on video the whole time. If, if yeah, you like well. this, yeah, I mean, let us know what you thought. If there's anything that you want to see us do, if you want to interact with us, uh, we can do that. Like we've we talked about stuff when we've had conversations in person with people, but we'd love to get more interaction with you so yeah send us comments and questions and everything um and if you have things. if you have those those images of you listening to events a pod in weird yes. places send those and we'll put them on the show and we'll put them on the instagram and everything and yeah we'd yeah. love to see it we'd love to see it sounds good man sweet uh well until next time whenever that may be uh keep watching the sky bye <laughs>